I'm making it like an uwu face. No, it's an owo face. O w o. He's a furry. You've been through hell and back, but now it's time to atone for your sins and your past cycles. You must find a mate or die. Which direction do I head? North. You trek to the north, towards a land of towering structures that pierce the heavens. You traverse the rocky, hilly fields as you avoid large predators that roam the area. It is here where you hope to find a mate, if they even exist in this strange place. You spot a strange slug cat climbing one, one of the towers unlike any you've seen before. It has no mouth with which to eat or speak with and is able to generate spiky, bone-like protrusions from its tail. It does not react when it notices you, giving you a good view of it. Fascinating. Do you approach it to see if it is compatible either as a mate or a food resource? Yes. You approach the strange slug, strange slug cat cautiously, watching it as it climbs to the top of the tower. You're not sure what it's doing, but you hope that it is another slug cat. Maybe you could have a conversation, or whatever slug cats do. You call out to it, but it doesn't react. Perhaps it is deaf or cannot hear you. You begin to wave your hands in an effort to get its attention. Go a walk at it? Do I not have any other options? The walk hits their head and they stare back at you with annoyance. Can't you tell I'm trying to ignore you? I heard you had to suffer through being the protagonist of the first more slug cats dating sim. Please don't drag me into this again. You don't really follow the conversation, only you don't really follow the conversation, only stare back in confusion. What? The other slug cat rubs their fingers into their forehead in frustration. Who even decides to make another one of these? At this time all this time people have been waiting for more slug cats to release, what will they think when they learn that three and a half years of the entire development time was spent solely on developing this dating sim? Look, just come over here and kiss me already and let's get this over with. Kiss you, but you don't have a mouth. I used to have a mouth back in the more slug cats version. Back in the first more slug cats version, I used to be able to swallow and regurgitate spears. Isn't that romantic? You blush. Yeah, that that certainly is something. But now look how they nerfed me. Unbelievable. Spearmaster abruptly stabs a spear deep into the wall with a tremendous amount of force. It's a bit terrifying. How are you even talking to me right now? What? Oh, I don't need a mouth for that. I vocalize out of my tail. You stare at the holes on their on their tail, both fascinated and repulsed by their questionable biology. Approach the tail. You lean your mouth towards the tail and they immediately jump back. Ew, what, what do you think you're trying to do? You continue after them until they backed into the edge of the platform. <laughs> I just looked at the slug cat face. Go for the kill. As you approach, sharp needles suddenly erupt out of every hole in their tail, piercing through your body multiple times. You die pretty much immediately. Restart. Okay. East. You travel to the east to a large expanse of water littered with small islands and out cropping the industrial waste and the skeletons of civilizations long forgotten. When you arrive at this water's edge, you search around for a little while, and then you find a small cave that you think will make a suitable home for you. You step into the entrance and make yourself comfortable. However, you begin to hear some noise. It sounds like something is moving around and making sounds, but you can't make out what it is because the noise is coming from further inside the cave. You are uneasy and unsure of what to do. Call out to them. A creature suddenly springs out with an alarming speed. It's another slug cat like you, except blue colored with some kind of strange aquatic gills on their face. They jump up and down in excitement upon seeing you. It's another slug cat! It's another slug cat, it says! Clearly an energetic one, it continues speaking excitedly. Wah! Another slug cat! Did you come here to scavenge materials too? I'm scavenging. I'm scavenging for love. Without listening to your response, the kill slug cat jumps up on top of you. Mwah! You smell so good! You're so, so good! Whoa, calm down, you're being obnoxious, you reply. It's not that you have anything against it, per se, but this one seems a little ex incredibly excited about you, and that makes you uncomfortable. Are you afraid of me? The blue creature asks. Psh, no way, you're nothing. The kill slug cat giggles, and then suddenly jumps up and jumps down into a small puddle of water and disappears. The cave becomes very quiet after that. You wonder if they're coming back, or if maybe they didn't like your answer. I feel like if we chase after them, we're gonna drown. Oh wait. After only a few minutes of waiting, you feel and hear an ominous rumbling. The slug cat springs back out of the puddle excitedly, a huge smile on their face. They are trailed by a monstrous mechanical beast larger than you've ever seen. You are not smiling. You are scared. Roll out of the way. You try to move, but the beast is practically as large as the entire interior of the cave. Its mechanical jaw crushes around you like a prison. The other slug cat slips away swiftly with a giggle, while the jaws clamp shut and shatter, shut and shatter every bone in your body. Restart. Okay, no, no, no. We got a romance with you. Hold on. Call out to them. It's scavenging for love. Uh, let's try chasing after them. You decide to jump down to the puddle of water too and figure out where they went. You slip down into the fridge of water and begin to gasp as the cold water rapidly seeps around your thick skin. You try to look around underwater, but you can't see the other slug cat anywhere. You flail your arms about and try to tread water, but it's no use. You're disoriented and lose track of the way back out. It's only a few seconds later before you pass out. Restart. Okay. Maybe we tell him we're afraid of them. Okay. Call out to them. I'm scavenging for love. Yeah, a little. The slug cat suddenly leans forward and whispers in your ear. That is a fear. That's respect. I like a slug with some fear in their eyes. I like a challenge. You have a challenge for me, don't you? 
You still do not know what, what to make of this slug now. Its body is blue and slimy, and you do not feel particularly well about it. You would prefer to have a less, hy less hyperactive front. You notice that it's watching you very carefully, as if it is waiting for a chance to pounce on you. Okay, I'm interested. You cannot help but feel that it is a little too friendly, and you're not quite sure why. Perhaps it's just the effect of this creature's natural exuberance, and you're overthinking it. Break the silence. Uh, I should probably... So anyway, if you look... So anyway, if you're looking to date me, you need to meet my mother first. What? Sorry, it's a requirement. Do you want to go see her now? I... Uh... Yeah, sure, I guess. Yay, it's been so long since we had a visitor. They suddenly run circles around you and grasp your, grasp your hand firmly. Come on, come on, let's go! Before you know it, you're being dragged swiftly out of the cave by them. Whoa. You're rapidly escorted along the structure of the water... Uh, along the surface of the water towards the structure towering monolith of a structure in the distance. God, I can't wait. The slug cat does not let up their energy as they take you inside the structure and you quickly weave through a maze of interior passages. Your mother lives here? Yeah, she's right in this room. You emerge into a large, open, metallic chamber, the floors of which are soaked with pools of water. A mechanical device floats around the chamber, gleaming with floating lights. You don't understand. Uh-huh. Uh, where's your mom at? What do you mean? She's right there. The slug cat excitedly points towards the floating device and then randomly does back to you. What do you mean? You question everything. Was this a trap? Is this even a viable partner? There is no doubt in your mind that the slug cat must be a construct, a program puppet controlled by her mother's voice. She is not truly alive in any way you can tell. This is simply the next generation of a very old tradition using a new form of technology as a tool. Uh... Nice to meet you. Can you understand me? I'm looking for a soulmate. We gotta be forward. I'm looking for a soulmate. Honesty is the best policy. You tell the machine that you are here to find your soulmate. Your partner's mother looks at you with new eyes. You creatures and your romantic ideals. How sweet. A soulmate is someone who will help you find your path in life, be it good or bad. Am I right so far? Yeah, I think so. I'm glad you were brought here to find someone special, someone who will love and cherish you forever. It's important to find someone to share your life with, to find someone who will accept you for who you are and will love you unconditionally. Yo! Oh, that's, what I was, that's exactly what I was going to say, smiled the kind machine lady. Suddenly your stomach starts to rumble. Okay, forget all of that. You poor thing, you must be starving. Your partner's mother orbits you with some concern. I can't believe my child didn't feed you before coming here. They have no manners. You try to track her position as the robotic arm spirals around frantically. They're trying to date you and they don't even know how to take care of you. For shame. Nah, that's cool. I'm used to starving. You shrug. Do you have any food, though? All we have at the moment are these marshmallows that Ruffles gathered last time they were out. You recoil at the food item. It's not one you're familiar with. You're not sure what to make of it. You can have some. We have plenty. Offer your egg. Ah, you would like me to read this? It's a bit dusty, but I'll do my best. Hold on. Their mother begins to explain the properties of the egg to you in excruciating detail. Wait, no, don't explain it. Make food with it. Oh, of course. It's been a while since I've cooked a proper meal. <laughs> the machine twirls around through the air excitedly. With this egg, we can make a classic, yet somewhat, somewhat modern slug cake. You need more than an egg for that, you say as you ponder the orbulous egg. I can improvise. I'll have you know that I am a very capable cook. Okay, good luck, Mom. She suddenly pauses in the air with the egg. Wait a second. This egg... Yeah, it's an egg. This egg is just the right amount of portable. Yeah, eggs tend to be that way. This recipe would be just the right tactical, tactical implementation. Implement this, food into, implement this food into my mouth. Could this be a solution? Solution to my hunger, yes. She suddenly cracks the egg in half. A forceful suction pulls the egg that begins that pulls the machine and all of the floating lights into it. As they collect into a central point, it's... As if all of the lights begin to combine to create an increasingly blinding glow. The suction only grows stronger, pulling the water, rocks, and surrounding metal into it. You and your partner are caught up in this and get assimilated as well. Open your eyes. In this white void, everything is combined. Your memories remain, but so too have you acquired the memories of your partner and family. Have you found your soulmate, or have you become your soulmate? It seems like one and the same. A perfect, undeniable, shared understanding of each other. A soul combined in unison. This was the state of being you were searching for? You are sure of it. Okay. That seems... Yeah, we got a soulmate. Yeah, I'll look at chat again now. We try? What? But we became egg. But we became egg. We became egg. We are egg. Look at us. Romance more? Okay. Let's check if we can... Change up Ruffles' things. Uh... I'm looking for a soulmate. Do you have any food? Take the marshmallow. 
You stick the marshmallow into your mouth and it is immediately not what you're expecting. While it's soft and chewy like a good slime mold would be, it doesn't add a layer of awful spice. It's actually so gross your entire mouth is on fire. As you swallow, you feel as if acid is running through your insides. You fall to the ground in pain. What did you just eat? The world around you goes blurry as the fire rages inside. This will be your final meal. Okay, bad ending. Oh wait, fuck. I didn't mean to... Yeah. East, enter, call out to them. I'm scavenging for love. Yeah, a little. Uh, break the silence. Yeah, sure, I guess. Whoa, your mother lives here. What do you mean? I'm looking for a soulmate. Smile at the machine, lady. Do you have any food? Eat the glowy food instead. Now I'm good. I'll just take one of these. You jump up and grab one of the glowy food items floating in the air. Almost immediately as you touch it, your mother, your partner's mother lets out a guttural screech, piercing your eardrums. You don't know what's happening. You look, turn quickly to look back at the other slug cat in confusion, but they appear to be screaming as well. Uh, did I do something wrong? Stop hurting my mom. The other slug cat skips across the surface of the water pool at a speed that should not be physically possible. Before you know it, their hands are around your throat. They push you down into the water and hold you there. You struggle to get free, but it's no hope. The glow of the floating food items twinkle above the surface of the water, looking like stouts. It's a beautiful final vision to end your journey on. Um, is there another ending with Rivulet? Should I, like, continue clicking through the other dialogue options, or...? No? Okay. One for each. Okay. To the south, you approach a land of waste and ruins. The scattered byproducts of bygone eras lie strewn across this landscape in mounds that resemble artificial hills and mountains. You proceed further. Suddenly in the distance, you see a crimson-colored slug cat. Okay, cranberry flavor. I'm interested. She is aggressive and seems to have the ability to create explosions from her body. That is sexy as fuck. I am interested. And propel herself with a shockwave. She is a mother slug cat who is grieving for the loss of her children. So what you're saying is... Explodey Dommy Mommy Slug Cat? Regardless, she is your only hope of continuing your lineage. You must choose to approach her carefully or she'll flee due to her being terrified and grief stricken. Sneak up on her, throw the egg at her. The MILF Slug Cat, yeah. You remain silent and hidden among tall blades of grass, slowly approaching the Mother Slug Cat. Your body is shaking nervously and your eye is twitching. Your efforts of remaining unseen are in vain, the Mother Slug Cat looks directly at you. You feel your heart pounding as she stares into your eyes. She lets out a loud hiss, jumping backwards in an exaggerated fashion. She is scared of you, just as you are of her. It seems you share a tragic bond. Both of you are lonely individuals. Hand her a rock. You pick up a rock and hand it to the mother slug cat. She holds it in her hand and stares at it, but doesn't seem to be pleased. She places it into her mouth, coating it with an explosive substance. She spits it out, having turned the rock into an explosive. She holds it in her paws and seems to admire it, then throws it back at you. It explodes upon impact with you, causing you to fall backwards. You are dazed and confused as the world spins around you. You struggle to breathe as the world fades to black. Okay, let's throw the egg at her. You fling the explosive egg at her in an attempt to subdue her. The egg shatters when it hits the ground, instantly beginning to generate a space-time singularity. The other slug cat creates her own explosion, pairing the egg back at you. You try to run away, but the shockwave of the explosion slams into you, hurting you severely. You lie on the floor dying as the other slug cat looks at you with pity. She utters a few last words. I am sorry, but you should have known better than to mess with a mother slug cat on the hunt. Uh, blush at her. You giggle at her exaggerated jump and blush as she stares at you angrily. She begins heading away from you and despair wells up inside of you. It's your last chance, you have to take it now. Wait, you're cute. You let out with the words, the truth that you couldn't hold back. The mother slug cat turns her head and begins walking towards you with a curious expression on her face. She rubs your head with her paw and you can feel your heart pounding in your chest. She hugs you with one of her claws, and you hug back. You don't need to be alone, baby. She softly smiles and gives you a kiss on the cheek. You take her paw in your hand and look into her eyes. Behind her, the sun bursts through the clouds, casting an array of beautiful colors on the landscape. The rain stops falling, and a rainbow forms overhead. We go to take a pearl from your stomach. <laughs> you pull the large brown pearl from your stomach and offer it to her. Immediately, a hundred scavengers emerge at the sight of the pearl with raised spears. You back away, and the mother slug cat hisses and spits at them. The scavengers growl in anger and begin charging at you both. The two of you are outnumbered, but you have each other, and that's all you need. You both stand ready to fight. You and the mother slug cat fight valiantly against the vicious horde of scavengers, but you ultimately overcome. You sacrifice yourself, taking several of the scavengers with you. She escapes without so much of a scratch, leaving you to die a warrior's death. Okay. Uh, sneak up on her. Let's keep moving towards her. No, okay, we got a blush at her. You continue moving cautiously, approaching the mother slug cat at a slow pace. It isn't working. She remains frightened of you. You try to think of how to calm her, but it seems your efforts are in vain. She grabs the spear lying on the ground next to her. You watch her, she aims it directly at you. Please don't hurt me, baby, you find yourself saying. Her spear releases, flying straight towards you. You attempt to dodge, but to no avail. It pierces straight through you and you fall to the ground. You have been killed by the mother slug cat. Proceed further, sneak up on her, blush at her. Wait, 
She stops walking, her back still facing you. Your voice trembles as you speak out to her again, tears rushing running down your face. She slowly turns around to face you once more. It seems you have nothing to lose, so you try one last thing to convince her. Please go out with me. She stares at you, then begins laughing. You feel mentally crushed by her laugh. <laughs> you pitiful, she says. I'm gonna end you. The mother slug cat suddenly pounces at you. It's quick and vicious. It's all over before you have time to react. Um... Throw the- oh no, don't throw the egg. South, proceed further, sneak up on her. Blush at her. I know what you- I know what you really need. You say this and she looks at you with curiosity. What could you possibly know about me, she asks. You're lonely. She looks away sadly and her body begins shaking. She stumbles backwards and falls over onto the ground. With a gasp, she says, you understand me perfectly. She begins crying loudly and you sit by her. You stroke her face with your long, slimy fingers and she stops crying. You need egg. You take out the egg you've been carrying around to give it to her. She accepts it, and her eyes brighten up. With a smile on her face and the egg in her hand, she sits back down. She places it in her mouth and coats it with a transformative bacteria. She spits it back out and places it on the ground. The egg begins to grow in a glow in a bright light. She steps back and stares at it, and the egg begins to transform. Figures emerge from the light. What did you just do? Mother, we are reborn. We are reintroduced to the existence. We are a family now. The new creatures look like the mother slug cat, and she is happy. She hugs the figures, and they embrace her back. You feel like you have finally done something right, and you have. Goodbye, loneliness. Goodbye, sadness. Hello, family. Walk into the light and embrace them. You walk towards the figures emerging from the light, and they embrace you. Their slimy bodies feel warm to the touch, and you feel tears escape your eyes. You have never felt so loved in your life. You enter the light as a family. She needed egg. West. You travel to the west, towards a very overgrown section of the world. The world was once filled with many amazing things, and vegetation was one of them. By traveling to the west, you are searching towards a place that has grown wild with plants and flowers. As you make your way up a hill, you see a hef large, hefty slug cat, who seems to have no problem maintaining their diet in this challenging world. Okay. Dilf? Bear Dad Bod Gourmand? As you watch, you notice that they seem to have the ability to generate infinite objects by regurgitating them from their stomach. You approach carefully, unsure of whether to attack or speak to them. Pick up a rock and throw it at them. You pick up a small rock and throw it at the hefty slug cat, but it bounces off their fat exterior. Completely unfazed. The hefty slug cat stares at you, narrowing their eyes. You widen your eyes and begin to sweat profusely, preparing for the hefty slug cat's retaliation. The hefty slug cat walks towards you, raising a tiny stubby arm and pokes you in the forehead. I wasn't expecting to see somebody else out here. You're not from my colony, right? They ask. Uh, no, I'm looking for another slug cat to be my mate, oh whoa, you say. Ah, so that's it. I can tell by the way you said it. It's not an easy thing for you to say. Things have been tough lately, haven't they? Tough? Nah, I'm a pro gamer. The hefty slug cat stares at you, chins wobbling. You're a pro... gamer? You nod. The hefty slug cat stares at you, seemingly in thought. A pro gamer, huh? I've never heard that one before. I've, had, I've heard plenty of others, but that's a new one. It's true, though. The hefty slug cat stares at you and puts a finger to their chin. I'm afraid a liar is all I see before me. Liars have been known to make the most insane of claims. Your heart rate increases. You've never been this great under, pre great under pressure. <laughs> LMAO, a liar? Nah, check this. They call this a pro gamer move. You throw your egg by your feet and prepare to use the gravity manipulation strat to fling yourself super far with the singularity. Perform your frame perfect input. You pounce back to the edge of the singularity's gravity field and slide cancel backwards towards the outer 5% of the shockwave's radius. You are two pixels off, however, and you immediately get sucked back to the core of the singularity. Every atom in your body is jostled as you become extremely dead. Gorman, I am a pro gamer. Okay, I got here unassisted. Okay. He doesn't believe. Okay. I'm lonely. I hear that. Things have been getting worse for us lately, haven't they? It's been tough for myself as well, the hefty slug cat says. Really? You're huge, and you have, like, infinity supplies. How are you lonely, you ask? I can procure many things from my stomach, but love is not one of them. The hefty slug cat sighs and sits near you. You realize that the ground is wet, but you sit as well. Give them a hug. You try to wrap your arms around the hefty slug cat's large exterior, but your arms cannot reach all the way around. The hefty slug cat laughs and says, <laughs> You're cute. You're not sure how to respond, so you laugh nervously. The hefty slug cat is just standing there, laughing. Uh, you're really warm, you say, trying to think of something to say. Yeah, I suppose I am, the hefty slug cat says, and begins laughing for a while. Neither of you know what to say, so you sit in silence for a while. What are you doing out here right now? Gathering food and supplies for my colony. You have a whole colony? 
Yeah, of course. Well, not, we're not all loners like you. How big are we talking? Oh, I'd say about 30 or 40, give or take a few. Whoa! Out of all of them, I want to be with you. The hefty slug cat looks at you with the strangest look in their eye. Are you sure that's what you want? Are you sure that's what you want? Yes, I've never been this sure of anything in my life. With that, the hefty slug cat smiles. All right then, as long as you're sure about this, let's do it. You nod your head. This is the happiest moment of your life. Take their ha hand and go someplace private. You walk with the hefty slug cat, hand in hand. You're both nervous and excited, this is what you've been waiting for. Once you reach someplace private, they s stop and start making a bonfire. You stare at them, confused. Uh, what are you doing? Weren't you inviting me? Weren't you inviting me for a private dinner? Oh yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> you say, laughing nervously. You start coughing excessively and you stare at them, worried. Um, uh, what should I make for us to eat? I wanted you. You take a deep breath and look into their eyes. I want you to be my mate, Uwu. Their eyes widen. The hefty slug cat goes through a list of emotions. First is shock, then happiness, then fear, then anger. They fall back and start involuntarily spitting items from their mouth. Uh, OMG, are you okay? A bomb drops out of their mouth and they fumble to try to pick it up. However, it accidentally detonates. You close your eyes from the blast and feel heat on your back. You disintegrate. Okay, let's try again. I'm lonely. Give him a hug. Out of all of them, I want to be with you. What are you doing? I have this egg. You take out the egg from your pouch and offer it to the hefty slug cat. They smile and begin grinning from ear to ear. You brought me food, they say. They say. Ah, uh, yeah, you want it? You ask nervously. Yes, I want it. Give it to me. They begin heating the egg over the fire, making scrambled eggs. How did you know I love eggs? The hefty slug cat asks, beaming. Beaming. You stare at them, still nervous and unsure of what to say. Uh, I don't know. You watch them cook. As the egg cooks, reality itself seems to bend around the resultant food product. Time seems to warp and you watch as the steam rises as if in slow motion. It's as if the salt, pepper, and heat of the fire all bend space and time to reach a primordial state of deliciousness. You stare at the hefty slug cat with bewilderment, but your mouth can't help but salivate. With a sudden primal hunger, the other slug cat greedily consumes all of the egg. Their body begins to glow and levitate, and infinite matter begins to radiate from their mouth. You shield your eyes. The light is blinding, and it's as if, it's as if it has consumed everything. Out of a singular point of the slug cat's mouth, subatomic particles rain. They combine into atoms and then into more complex elements and matter. Slowly, the light becomes, begins to consolidate into a dimmer afterglow. You open your eyes. A cycle has been completed. A new universe has been born. You have a lot of work to do. Okay. So, we can go down on... Who's the last slug cat left? Who are we going down on? Saint? We going down on Saint? You descend beneath the ground. Yeah, we can try to go down on Spearmaster again, but to the deepest reaches where the nat nature of reality distorts the fog demons roam and the past civilizations border the void. Surely, for someone with your experiences, this would be the most appropriate location to potentially find a mate to spend your life with. However, it is not always so. Once the search begins, one does not always find what they are looking for. Explore the void. The void is a place of instability and decay. It is a place that can't even be properly defined or accurately described. Rather, it is a state of nonconformity in which everything may be possible and nothing is certain. Look around. You look around and see that you are not alone. There are other creatures like yourself scuttling around amongst the rocks. You hear a sound like the chomping of jaws. You need to be careful as it's very dark here and predators could be hidden around any corner. Investigate the sound. You cautiously edge- oh, I'm great at edging. Oh, uh, you cautiously edge around the corner, your eyes peering into the darkness. You see nothing but hear the chomping of jaws again. As if perfectly blended with the darkness, a black mouth of a lizard springs out of the darkness at you. It is an ambushed predator and you fall into the jaws of a carnivorous monster. There is a fiery pain before the world fades away. Explore the void, look behind you. You turn around to immediately see a large figure behind you. You're not entirely sure what you're looking at, but perhaps a pair of enormous feet. Sh is this a giant orange lizard? Hang on. Hang on. Your eyes trail further up. That's a big creature, all right. Are those muscles? Those, they are very well defined. You begin to blush a little, They also, but also feel that you're in suddenly in very real danger. Look all the way up. Oh, hello. Okay. You look up and see a terrifying face. Terrifying? If that's terrifying, then I want to live in fear every day. A monstrous, bestial visage that fills you with unquenchable dread. Oh, there's something else that's unquenchable. It sure as hell isn't dread. You'd recognize that face anywhere. You try to resist the urge to squeal into light. You're their biggest fan. Feel the creature's muscles. Oh. 
The creature grabs you by the neck, lifting you off the ground by your fleshy appendages. You see a long, sharpened canine tooth on the upper jaw protrude as the beast opens its mouth to bite you. The creature is without doubt the largest and most powerful predator you've ever come across. The way it stands and holds itself suggests an immense amount of strength and stability. You blush profusely. There's a quick flash of light accompanied by a loud pain that rings in your ears. The creature suddenly goes limp and collapses to the ground. That's impossible, it should be invincible. You feel a presence. Hello, was that guy bothering you? A green-colored slug cat floats, from the, <laughs> floats down from the sky in front of you. It has an aura of tranquility around it, yet some part of your mind feels some instinctive primal fear from its very being. The slug cat has an extremely long tongue, quite a bit quite a bit different from any slug cat you've encountered before. What that tongue do? I can think of a lot of things you could do with that tongue, Saint. In any case, this is the first of your species you've encountered here and could be an eligible mate. Wow, please lick me. The slug cat gives you a strange look, but then complies. Their tongue launches at you, slapping you across the cheek. As it retracts, the stickiness of it pulls you forwards, causing you to face plant on the floor. That was less romantic than you thought it would be, actually quite insulting. Lay there in embarrassment. You lay face planted on the floor, feeling kind of dumb. You roll over onto your side, expecting to see them laughing at you. Instead, you see the slug cat casually floating over to take your egg. Whoa, whoa, what do you think you're doing there? They ignore you and continue towards the egg. Hey, don't touch that! They finally stop their pursuit and turn to look at you. Why? They... Why? They ask with an expressionless look. Trust me, it won't taste good. Oh, I wasn't going to eat it. Plus, I'm more of a taco guy myself. They give the slightest impression of a grin, then turn back towards the egg. Wait and observe. You know what you do. You know what you do with the egg, but part of you is curious to see what other uses this egg might have. Does the slug cat know something that you don't? You sit back and watch. What are you going to do with it? I don't know how this got in your possession, but I've been looking for this for a long time. Uh, cool, but what do you need it for? This will finally solve everything. The slug cat's fur stands up on end. Okay. Uh, sure, dude. You can borrow it for a bit. The slug cat settles the egg on the ground and stares at it with determination. Let me take care of this. It'll all be over soon. They enter into a deep concentration and begin to levitate slowly above the ground. A bright X-shaped light forms above their head and then begins to travel towards the egg. As the light settles over the egg, it begins to grow increasingly brighter. Then, in quick combination, the light is met with a deafening pang as it ruptures the egg. Cover your ears. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's see if there's an ending with Spearmaster. What if we don't approach it? You decide to wait and watch it some more, as you're not too sure what to make of the creature. Spearmaster is like the super kinky version, right? Because, like, you could do some kinky shit with those spears. And I'm into that. So I'm interested. You decide to wait and watch it some more, as you're not too sure what to make of the creature. It simply sits there and continues to generate more and more spikes out of its tail, building an arsenal of weaponry. You must be preparing for a big hunt. A true survivor, you can't help but be impressed. Grab some spears to assist in the hunt. <laughs> this slug cat could be your hunting buddy. You go to grab a spear off the ground, but as soon as your hand touches it, the slug cat finally reacts to your presence. They unload their arsenal on you, raining down spears at lightning speed. You can't dodge them all and quickly succumb to your injuries. Yes, throw a rock at it. What? Yes, you don't have a mouth. How are you even talking to me? Sharing their frustration. I kind of get what it feels like to be nerfed, to be honest. You pat Spearmaster on the shoulder. I gotta eat so much food to hibernate. It's just dumb. They even removed me from arena mode. What the hell? Yeah, I guess you have it rough as well. Actually, no. What would Spearmaster sound like? Yeah, I guess you have it rough as well. These developers hate us. Spearmaster looks at you with deep understanding. Honestly, I heard a rumor they were going to remove me from the game entirely. Absolutely sadistic. Give Spearmaster a hug. It's okay. We slug cats need to stick together a little. I love you, baby. You wipe the tears out of Spearmaster's eyes. Thank you. I needed to hear that, Spearmaster says. But speaking of nerfed, I'm hungry and need to find nutrients to siphon with my spears. Spearmaster generates a fresh spear out of their tail and looks at it with admiration. I got eggs on the house. You pull out your trusty egg that you've been carrying with you all the time. Spearmaster looks over it curiously. It has a hard shell, so I'm not sure how effective my spears would be at siphoning from it, but I suppose it's worth a shot. You place the egg on the ground and line it up neatly for a clear and throw from one of Spearmaster's spears. They take aim and throw a direct hit into the egg. It immediately distorts the space around it like a miniature, miniature black hole. Shield your eyes. It's bright, extremely bright, but only for a moment. With all its might, Spearmaster's spear sucks the singularity into it, absorbing it as a nutrient. The distortion of space subsides, but Spearmaster's spear and attached umbilical begins glowing with a bright it Begins to glow with a blinding light. What? is this 
I can't absorb it all. Reach your hand out to rescue Spearmaster. Spearmaster struggles for a moment before the body collapses in on itself. Into a single point of matter smaller than your eye can even proceed. But with it, all of the surrounding matter begins to be absorbed into the point as well, in a runaway cascading collapse. You try to run, but you begin to be absorbed into the point almost as fast as you can try to react. Before you know it, your body is spaghettified and your surroundings go black, yet somehow you are still conscious. Observe your surroundings. Within the expanse of blackness, you soon see an unfamiliar silhouette. Mechanical noises whiz as it slowly pivots its way towards your location. Little creature, you were my first visitor, but hopefully not the last. I expected I would be visited by one of my own, but I suppose a dim-witted creature like you will suffice. This is pretty unlaw, my man. Shh, there is much work to be done, and I could use a helper. This is just the beginning. You shrug. There's not much else to do in this void, and you don't feel like wasting your brain cells trying to reason around a dating sim story arc. You get to work. Are there any other endings that we missed? No? Okay. Go for egg ending? This is egg ending. Let's accept our fate. I missed Gourmand. Only bad endings. I only did one saint ending. <clears throat> saint has multiple ways. There's a really good death for Spearmaster that I missed. Okay. Um, let's go search for food. Oh, what about me? Hmm? You need food too? No, I mean, you can siphon my nutrients with your spears. What? Okay. You want me to stab you? You'll die. Please, please stab me. Please, please thrust your spear into me, stupid Spearmaster. Jesus Christ. I have never wanted anything as much as I want your spear thrusted into me. And whatever, I don't have time for this. The rain is going to come soon. Spearmaster takes the spear and chucks it at your torso. It's not a pleasant experience and you quickly lose consciousness. Your nutrients leave your body. Don't walk at it. I have problems? No, that is complete- that is the reasonable response. Let's go search for food. You and Spearmaster climb to the roof of the tower and search for food. You overlook the canopies of structures out in the distance. The view is industrial, but oddly beautiful. You lean your head against Spearmaster's shoulders. This is nice. It is 100% what? Not? What is 100% not? A loud noise fires from the sky, and a large harpoon immediately skewers Spearmaster's chest cavity. Their corpse is hoisted up into the sky by a string. What? Hey, I'm the Vulture King, and this is our territory. Get lost, buddy. You just killed my boyfriend. You got a problem with that? Our boss here does what he wants. We rule this canopy. I'll get my revenge. Raising your voice, say, hey, we'll teach you a lesson you won't forget. You won't forget the wrath of the Vulture Gang. Grab a spear off the ground. Before you get the chance to react, red balls of spit fly towards the air and the impelting the vultures. They fly backwards, looking shocked. You vultures think you rule this canopy? Not when I'm around. I'll rip your wings right off your body. The red lizard makes quick chase, and the three vultures decide to make an escape. Threaten the red lizard with your spear. Whoa, wait, that's not necessary. I'm not here to eat you. I'm used to dealing. I'm used to dealing with red lizards. Don't think you can pull anything on me, foul beast. No, no, I just wanted to introduce you to my friend. They're kind of shy, but they've been eyeing you from a distance. Uh, okay. Sure, I guess. The red lizard runs off to get their friend like a good wingman. What is even happening right now? Hello. It's nice to meet you. Uh, hey, what's up? I, uh... I just think you're pretty cute. You're, like, pretty cute. Oh, thanks. So, do you come here often? Uh, yeah. This is, like, my hangout spot. Oh, cool, that's pretty neat. <laughs> yeah. I, oh my gosh. Are you okay? I'm, I'm just so nervous. It's fine, deep breaths. I'm pretty chill, you don't need to be nervous. Oh wow, that's so understanding. I, I love you. What? I mean, wait, no, I can't say that yet. It's too early, right? No, I always mess this up. Pat the lizard on the head. Before you get a chance to reach your hand out, a tentacle slaps the back of the lizard and pulls them off the edge of the tower. You hear a faint sloping sound before more tentacles emerge over the edge. Panic. The situation has gotten out of control. Too much is happening at once. You grab your head as the massive tentacles move towards you. Glutal 
Uh, whoa! Yeah, that's not an appropriate thing to say. This is a family-friendly dating sim. You need to watch your mouth before you spare with the creature. It has little effect and the creature quickly ensnares you in its tentacles. You are dragged into its rotten maw where your body is dissolved away. Okay. Uh, any other good Spearmaster endings? Are there any other Spearmaster endings? I guess we can check. It won't take too long. I think that was all the endings. I'll check if there was another one. Uh, we could try the other rivulet endings. I'm scavenging for love. Yeah, a little. What if we have to be going now? The slug cat looks at you quizzically. You gotta be going now to see my mother? No. Yay, I'm so glad. Let's go. They pounce on your back, flip over your shoulders, and then grasp your hand firmly. Before you can react, you're being swiftly dragged out to the cave. Out of the cave by them. Yo, dude, wait. You rapidly escort along the surface of the water towards the towering monolith of the structure. Okay, we're back here. Uh, nice to meet you. The device floats over to you. Oh, how sweet. Nice to meet you, too. It looks towards the other slug cat. Is this your new friend? I always enjoy having more company. Their mother seems very polite. You feel a little more comfortable. Yeah, I think we're dating now or something. Yeah, I think we're dating now or something. How adorable. A new member of the family. What's your name? Uh, I don't have a name. How can you not have a name? Their, their mom seems astonished. It's fine, mom. Don't be weird about it. The other slug cat interjects. No, we need to give them a nickname. How about Sophantheal? What? Mom, what kind of name is that? That sounds dumb. Okay, fine. What about Gorbo? Mom, you're like the worst at coming up with names. Shh, Ruffles, I'm trying to think here. I told you not to call me that. Uh, it's okay. Let's just get back on track. Suddenly, your stomach starts to rumble. Okay, we're back to eating. Um, I think these are all the ending options, because we... Unless there was another offer egg. Okay. Um... We could check one other possible rivulet ending. Yeah, sure. Mother lives here. What do you mean? Can you understand me? The device floats over close to you. Of course I can understand you, little one. I, comp I comprise a vast network of intelligence. You feel dumb. Of course it can understand you. Why would they want- Why would they bring you to meet their mother if they couldn't understand? This is bad. You wanted to make a good first impression. You're already messing this up. You weren't ready to meet their parents. Why must things always be so stressful? Uh, yeah, of course I- I knew that. I was just kidding. Start to panic. There's no way this advanced machine isn't already judging your intelligence. You're blowing this. How embarrassing. You need to find a way out. You turn and make a dash for the room's exit. Hey, wait, where are you going? The other slug cat cries out behind you. Just keep running. You hop through the tunnel and crawl as fast as you can. This is the worst day of your life. How could you make how could you have, how could you have made such a fool of yourself? You run and run and don't ever look back. Okay. Yes, this is uh the blueberry slug cat's ending as a dating sim. Uh South? Yes, milk slug cat. Okay. Um was there another artificer ending? We wanted to blush at her. I know what you really need. You need children. She looks at you in confusion as you explain yourself. We could populate this world, make new children. He growls angrily and begins to cry again. I had children. She looks at you angrily and spits in your face. They can't be replaced. She disappears, leaving behind a cloud, a dust cloud. Oh? You weep as she leaves, then you pack your things and leave as well. The rain is starting to come and you spend so much time talking that you forgot to eat. You lay down and accept your fate. Is there an, another artificer ending we're missing? Aside from egg ending? I thought that was all the artificer. Okay. Let's go for Gormand. What if we throw a spear at Gormand? The spear flies through the air in an arc and lands in front of the hefty slug cat. They look at it and then they look at you. You back up slowly, unsure of what they will do. We're going through all the endings, guys. We're, we're going. We're going. You guys don't have to panic. They pick up the spear, sniff it, and then throw it at you. You try to duck, but get hit in the leg. The you're cute? No, we chose you're cute. Then you just die. Because, um, like scavengers show up or something. Unless there was another choice down the you're cute line. You're cute was the first thing we said. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought you would catch it, the heavy slug cat says, running towards you. What? The spear, I threw it, so you would catch it. I didn't mean to hit you. You stare at them in disbelief, hold your leg in pain. As the slug cat runs towards you, they trip over their own feet and their entire body weight falls on top of you. You hear a loud crunch as your vision goes black. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that either. The hefty slug cat is cut off as the egg-like object in your hand explodes, killing you both instantly. You think you missed a bit? Greet them. You cautiously move forward, staying low on the ground. You approach the large slug cat slowly, unsure of how they will react. As you get close, you yell hello at them. The sudden sound of your voice startles them, and they inst instinctively roll up into a ball. They've been 
They then begin to tumble down the hill towards you. Unsure of what you do, you duck and cover. This is highly ineffective and they land directly on top of you. You feel the air in your lungs forced out by the sheer force of their weight. Your last thoughts are of how heavy they felt as you die from the collision. Well done. Okay, pick up a rock. He didn't like us saying we were pro gamer, but I'll just say it's, it's been so tough. It has? Tell me, have you been hurt at all? The hefty slug cat asks. I'm just always in danger. Ah, I can respect that. The world we live in is a harsh one, and it's rare to find someone who can put up with that kind of lifestyle. Suddenly, three red lizards and a giant red centipede emerge over the hill. The hefty slug cat looks at them, and a rage fills their eyes. See, this is exactly what I'm saying. How is the DLC? DLC's good. No, you can. I think Gormand can roll infinitely. I think that's what they were referring to, is Gormand can just roll. Do the roll movement, but... How can I put this? The hefty slug cat says. I think you may be cursed. What? I'm not cursed. I'm just unlucky, you say. No, like, if there's such a thing as destiny, whoever was responsible for designing your fate legitimately hates you. That's stupid, you say. Is it? Tell me, have you had a happy moment in your life? The hefty slug cat asks. No. Exactly. You're destined to suffer, and it's only natural you'd have difficulty finding love. Okay, that's cool and stuff, but we're kind of surrounded... The hefty slug cat looks behind you. You follow their gaze and see that the three red lizards and the giant red centipede have surrounded you. Go ahead and fight them. I'm a peace-loving slug cat. Fighting isn't really my thing, the hefty slug cat says. You sigh and turn to face the enemies behind you. The three lizards hiss and growl, flashing their teeth. Before you get a chance to do anything, you're covered by their spit while they quickly maul you to death. Restart. Uh, okay. Take up a rock and throw it at them. I'm lonely. Um, let's try patting them on the back. You pat the hefty slug cat on the back, extending your arm out as far as it can go. Yeah, Gorman says he's peaceful, he puts out a fucking hit list and massacres everything. Met you don't don't spoil how to do things. We're going through, you don't have to tell me what to do. We're going through all the endings. Don't stop. You pat the hefty slug cat on the back, extending your arm out as far as it can go. Like why would you sp like no! Stop! You feel a slight pain in your arm, but you push through. Thanks, I really needed that, the hefty slug cat says, extending the arm out. Oh, did we get the glitch ending for Gourmand? I thought we got the glitch ending for Saint. They pat you on the head. You feel warm and fuzzy. Somehow you don't feel alone anymore. What are you doing out here? Gathering food and supplies for my whole colony. You have a whole colony? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yo, hook me up. You nervously ask if the hefty slug cat could hook you up with a mate in their colony. The hefty slug cat looks at a loud rumbling, lets out a low rumbling chuckle. <laughs> I doubt any of the slug cats I know would be interested in someone like you. You're small, scrawny, and have no combat abilities. Well, literally none of the slug cats in your colony could survive the stuff I went through, you say. What do you mean, the stuff you went through? You know, the pre-cycled rain, the Myros vultures and red creatures, the rot, the million food pips I need to fill, I'll recycle, the nacho cheese, the deadly snails, those trained lizards, all that worm grass, whatever the hell the gimmick and chimney was, pebbles... Pebble Sky Island's just being fucking fuck you, unfortunate development, and being like impossible to platform out of, and then you got all the fucking foam arrays being filled with worm grass again, you got the Myros vultures being trying to ride the reindeer, you got the red centipedes and shit all over the place, you got the fact that subterranean is black as hell, it's dark there, you got the red spiders being trying to get out of shaded, you got industrial complex, the train lizards everywhere, it's just miserable, everything sucks, everything hurts! You list the many dangerous things you encountered on your journey to find a mate. I don't know what any of that stuff means, the hefty slug cat seems- the hefty slug cat seems even more confused. Never mind, you say. I'll just find the colony, lol. You begin to walk away, but the hefty slug cat stops you. I can't let you do that. You're an intruder. I need to see it! What if my fated mate is there? I can't let this go. The hefty slug cat stares at you in apathy. Look, I get that you have needs, and I sympathize, but if you want to go to our colony, we're gonna have issues. Maneuver your way past. I'm sorry, the hefty slug cat says. The hefty slug cat suddenly slices towards you with an incredibly alarming speed. What?! You don't get to finish your sentence before the hefty slug cat slams into your midsection. The force of the hefty slug cat's weight smashes you to the ground and you let out a pained yell. The hefty slug cat presses down on top of you and you wince as the hefty slug cat's immense weight crushes your frail body. Okay. Take a walk and throw it at them. I'm lonely. Hold their hand. You reach out your hand to grab the- hold theirs curious of their reaction. They look at you with a confused expression, but they grab onto you as well. I'm gourmand, the hefty slug cat says. I'm- you say before you realize you don't know your name. I... I uh, forgot my name. It's okay. It'll probably come back to you eventually, Gorman says. Cool. What are you doing out here right now? Gathering food and supplies for my colony. Okay. 
Out of all of them, I want to be with you. Take their hand and go someplace private. Uh, what are you doing? You decide, I guess. All right, they say. I'll make a feast. Whatever you want, my love. We both sit on some logs around the bonfire watching it burn. You watch as they begin to cook more food than you've ever seen. Are you sure you can eat all that, you ask? They begin laughing and nod their head. I'm a really, really big slug cat. I need a lot of food. I'm not just talking about a waistline. You stare at them in amazement. You've never seen a creature that loud move around in such a rapid manner before. Oh, Gourmand is fucking huge. Man is packing heat. Start eating the food as it's prepared. The hefty slug cat sits down next to you and you begin eating the food they've made. You fill your stomach up faster than you have in any other cycle before. The slug cat smiles and hands you more food. Uh, no thanks. I'm already at max food pips. Nonsense. Please enjoy my cooking. Don't insult the chef. You force yourself to keep eating beyond your limits. Suddenly the game crashes with an index out of range error in HUD.food meter. Okay. I think that's all the gourmet endings. Let's see if... I would not be upset if we can sleep with him. Now, I feel like Saint's gonna kill him regardless. But, God, this man is sexy as fuck. Can I have your autograph? The beast stares at you and begins to move towards you slowly. It opens its jaws and shrieks, a sound unlike of anything you've heard before. You are awestruck by its appearance, and that feeling is only amplified by the fine presence as you feel its vocals resonate through your chest. It slams its black, large black talons upon you, pinning your body to the floor. You blush profusely. Oh, Saint killed him. Uh, you're looking fine. Thanks, I just got a haircut. My fur is getting pretty long. They look you over from head to toe. It doesn't seem to be particularly flirtatious, more a method of thorough inspection. You become self-conscious about your many flaws. <laughs> yeah, me too. Oh, since when did members of your species have fur? You can't recall ever getting a haircut in your entire life. They're seemingly- they're seeming more and more foreign to you. Could they really be an eligible mate? And why did you respond with me too? You've been too anxious about this encounter to really think about what you're saying. At the slug cap. Curiosity gets the best of you and you reach out to feel their skin. Is it the same as yours? What's this residual fur even feel like? However, they immediately jump back. Well, you're certainly very interesting, but maybe it's not such a good idea for us to meet right now. I best get going. You didn't mean to make them uncomfortable. Hold up. Before you get a chance to say any more, they shoot their tongue towards the ceiling and begin swinging away into the distance. What a strange specimen. Unfortunately, now you're just alone again. You stumble around in the darkness. It would help if you had a light source, but you do not. As you stumble around, you feel something tickle up against your skin. That something turns into many things before two suddenly large... Before suddenly two large fangs sink into the back of your neck. Your corpse is dragged away by a large spider as it returns to its burrow. Okay. Explore the void. Look behind you. Call the way up. Interview the creature. A golden lizard. Uh, from Echo. You attempt to formulate a proper sentence, but finally you are too terrified to speak. Terrified? That's not the word I would use. The beast does something that causes your mouth to gape open, your eyes to widen in terror. The creature steps forward and looks down on you with malice in its eyes. You feel a tremendous presence as the creature's horrible visage is applied to yours. You are powerless. You blush profusely. Go. Thanks, you're my hero. You reply to the slug cat in your best courting tone, hoping to impress it upon it the seriousness of the situation you are in. However, you have no reaction from the slug cat. Instead, you receive a feeling of trepidation from it, as if it knows something you don't. This causes you to have second thoughts without making a move. Uh, hey, you good? You question the slug cat's response to you. You're not just feeling the vibes. You're just not feeling the vibes <laughs> and want to make sure you're on the same wavelength with your potential mate. You try to reassure the slug cat. Yo, something must... Yo, something must be wrong with my eyes, because I can't take them off you. Are you trying to imply something? The slug cat asks, looking a bit annoyed. Uh, yeah, you picking up with what I'm throwing down? Yeah, you're making fun of my eyes. What? No! Throw down another one. Okay, look. Are you a time traveler? Because I see you in my future, you say, while striking a pose. Yes. The slug cat replies with a straight face. What? Yes, I am a time traveler. We all are. We follow the cycle. Okay. Look, dude, I just want to go out with you. Oh. The slug cat pauses for a few seconds, looking disappointed in you. In that case, no, I will not go out with you. Why? I'm not interested in relationships. I have higher priorities. The slug cat looks away as if trying to find a way to exit this interaction as soon as possible. Offer a gift. Okay, okay, hold up. Before you give up on me, the slug cat looks disinterested in whatever reasoning you might be, be, about, you might be about to give. I got you a gift, look! You hand the slug cat your egg. Maybe this offering will help win them over. To your surprise, the expression immediately changes. Where did you find that? You'd give this to me? I'll give it to you if you go out with me. 
Done. I would mail you in exchange for this. The slug cat swiftly reaches for the egg. Huh? Let's not go that far yet. Do you have any idea what this is? The slug cat takes the gift and admires it deeply. It egg. Yes. This will finally solve everything. Your fur stands up on end. Okay, honey buns. Do what you have to do. I love you. The slug cat settles the egg on the ground and stares at it with determination. Let me take care of this. It'll all be over soon. Okay, we're doing this again. Okay. Do these matter? Hold on. I think the things I choose there matter. Feel the creature's muscles. Please lick me. Don't touch that. What if I take the egg back? You sprint towards the slug cat to grab the egg before it does. That's all. That's all yours. You're not going to let this random dude touch your precious cargo. Who do they think they are? That's mine. Get it back. The slug cat leisurely turns their head back towards you and launches their tongue at you again. It sticks firmly onto your torso and you feel a harsh tug as the tongue pulls back. It swiftly drags you across the ground, finally releasing its stick on you to fling you off the edge of a cliff. You fall into the darkness below as you lay... As you lay struggling to move your body, a black lizard slips out of a nearby pipe to make quick work of you in your defenseless state. Oh, wait. Hang on. You blushed profusely. Thanks, you're my hero. Hey, you good. Don't add another one. Look, I want to go up with you. Don't let up. This slug cat doesn't know what it's talking about. What higher priority could there possibly be than you? Being your mate is the only priority that matters. You just need to make the other slug cat realize their mistake. Well, I'm not leaving here without a mate, and you're not leaving here without one either. You stand your ground. However, the ground doesn't help you much as the other slug cat simply takes flight into the air and swiftly leaves. Make chase. You turn to chase after the slug cat, but are interrupted as you hear a loud pang sound again. Or at least you would have heard it if the neural synapses between your brain and your ears weren't shattered in the same instant. Instead of hearing, instead you hear nothing, for you have ascended. Saint on the Sigma grind set. Thanks, you're my hero. Hey, you good. Throw down another one. Give up. You accept this reasoning. No need to force this issue further. You can find another mate elsewhere. You wave goodbye to the slug cat and it takes flight off to who knows where. However, you're also very close to the void sea. Perhaps you should just take the dive and procrastinate on worrying about relationships until after you stripped your mortal coil. You begin to trip through the depths deep into the subterranean caverns, nearing the bottom of the world. You descend further and further down. However, as you reach one room before the void sea, an invisible void worm clips through the wall and shatters every bone in your body. What the hell? I thought that glitch was fixed a while ago. I don't know that glitch. Look behind you. Okay, I think that's all the saint endings. Wait and observe. Sure you can borrow it. Cover your ears. Oh, maybe it doesn't matter. Okay. Ah, uh, is that all the endings? Did we miss any? I think we got all of them. Okay, now the question is, which ending do we go for? So the thing is, we've got the choice between, um, like, Spearmaster being ascended, becoming an egg, becoming an egg with Moon and Rivulet, which is very tempting. I do like the idea of being an egg. There's also, um, Big Titty Dommy Mommy, um, Artificer, with her kids revived. But, like, I don't really want kids, so I don't think I'm really into that. Um, did I choose to ask the saint to lick me? Of course. You wouldn't. What about the blue lizard? The problem is the blue lizard is a bad end, Bubblebee. The blue lizard gets killed by a daddy long legs. Okay. Okay. Without listening to your response, the gill slug cat jumps on top of you. Mwah! You smell so good! You are so, so good! Whoa, calm down. You're being obnoxious, you reply. It's not that you have anything against it, per se, but this one just seems to be incredibly excited about you, and that makes you uncomfortable. Are you afraid of me? Yeah, a little. The slug cat suddenly leans forward and whispers in your ear. That isn't fear, that's respect. I like a slug with some fear in their eyes. I like a challenge. You have a challenge for me, don't you? Uh, you still do not know what to make of this slug cat. Its body is blue and slimy, and you do not feel particularly well about it. You would prefer to have a less hyperactive friend. You notice that it's watching you very carefully, as if it's waiting for a chance to pounce on you. You cannot help but feel that it is a little too friendly, and you're not quite sure why. So am I the bottom in this situation? Because I'm fine with that, if he wants to pounce on me. I mean, I'm not going to say no. Perhaps it's just the effect of the creature's natural exuberance, and you're overthinking it. Break the silence. Um, I should probably... So anyway, if you're looking to date me, you should probably meet my mother first. What? 
Sorry, it's a requirement. Do you want to go see her now? I, uh, yeah, sure, I guess. Yay, it's been so long since we had a visitor. They excitedly run in circles around you and grasp your hand, and then grasp your hand firmly. Come on, come on, let's go. Before you know it, you're being swiftly dragged out of the cave by them. Whoa. You're rapidly escorted towards, along the surface of the water towards a towering monolith of a structure in the distance. The slug cat does not let up their energy as they take you inside the structure and you quickly whip, weave through a maze of interior passages. I would like Rivulet to weave through my maze of interior passages. Your mother lives here? Yeah, she's right in this next room. You emerge into a large open metallic chamber, the floors of which are soaked with pools of water. A mechanical device floats around the chamber, gleaming with floating lights. You don't understand. Huh? What's your mom in? What do you mean? She's right there? The slug cat excitedly points towards the floating device, then randomly does a backflip. What do you mean? You question everything. Was this a trap? Is this even a viable partner? There is no doubt in your mind that this slug cat must be a construct, a program puppet controlled by her mother's voice. She is not truly alive in any way you can tell. This is simply the next generation of a very old tradition, using a new form of technology as a tool. I am looking for a soulmate. Honesty is the best policy. You tell the machine that you are here to find your soulmate. Your partner's mother looks at you with new eyes. You creatures and your romantic ideals, how sweet. A soulmate is someone who will ha help you find your path in life, be it good or bad. Am I right so far? Yeah, I think so. I'm glad you were brought here to find someone special, someone who will... Uh, love and cherish you forever. It's important to find someone to share your life with. When you saw this thumbnail you had to click, how am I enjoying the Secret Slug Cat's gameplay? Uh, this has been a very great ending. Yeah. Also, for anyone who wasn't here, we did not have assistance beating this. We did not use dev tools. Uh, this is, I think, the first unassisted completion of this playthrough. Um, but yeah. The first live one, at least, yeah. Uh, it's important to find someone to share your life with, to find someone who will accept you for who you are, and who will love you unconditionally. Yo, lol, that's exactly what I was going to say. Uh, did I visit Five Pebbles? I did not visit Five Pebbles. I heard of what would happen when we visited Five Pebbles. I did not want to go through the wall and up there. We took... Our path was, uh, Shaded, Industrial, Chimney Canopy, Sky Islands, hit those two Echoes, Passage out of Sky Islands, back to Industrial Complex, go through Outskirts, hit Farmerways, um... Hit the Echo in Farmerways, go through Farmerways, get to Subterranean, um... And then hit the Echo in Subterranean, then ascend down in the Void. That was our path. Perhaps if you go to Five Pebbles? If you make it to his room, he just kills you. But the Five Pebbles area, supposedly, is just underwater. Smile at the kind machine lady. Suddenly, your stomach starts to rumble. Okay, forget all of that. Okay, forget all of that. You poor thing. You must be starving. Your partner's mother orbits around you with concern. I can't believe my child didn't feed you before coming here. They have no manners. You try to track her position as the robotic arm spirals around frantically. They're trying to date you, and yet don't even know how to take care of you? For shame! Nah, it's cool, I'm used to starving, you shrug. Do you have any food, though? All we have at the moment are these marshmallows that Ruffles gathered last time they were out. You recoil at the food item. It's not one you're familiar with, and you're not sure what to make of it. You can have some, we have plenty. Are marshmallows in the game? I don't remember marshmallows. You thought Outskirts isn't rendered, you have to walk through invisible terrain? It's partially rendered. It's like half rendered, some of the terrain is like invisible. It's, it's all red. Um... I will be editing together the successful parts into one video that'll probably be like, I don't know, six, seven hours long. There were a lot of failures. And then uploading that to YouTube if you just want to see what like the actual progression through the game is. I am not going to be putting in like the five hours we spent dying in chimney, oh sorry, in Sky Island trying to get out of the platforming section and shit like that. Okay, off of my egg. Ah, you would like me to read this? It's a bit dusty, but I'll do my best. Hold on. Their mother begins to explain the properties of the egg to you in excruciating detail. Wait, no, don't explain it. Make food with it. Oh, of course. It's been a while since I've cooked a proper meal. The machine twirls around you through the air excitedly. With this egg, we can make a classic yet somewhat modern slug cake. You need more than an egg for that, you say as you ponder the orbulous egg. I can improvise. I'll have you know that I'm a very capable cook. Can you visit Moon? You can. Moon is dead. Uh, Moon is pre-Hunter. Pre being revived by Hunter's slag reset keys, so she's just dead. Sky Islands was pain. Sky Islands was unfortunate development. Um, okay, good luck, Mom. Oh, wait, but we get, uh, we get Rivulet, Energetic Top, and also Mommy Moon in this ending. This is the best ending. She suddenly pauses in the air with the egg. Wait a second, this egg? Yeah, it's an egg. This egg is just the right amount of portable. Yeah, eggs tend to be that way. This recipe would be just the right technical implementation. 
implement this food into my mouth. Could this be the solution? Solution to my hunger, yes. Um, it's weird. It's somewhere between Spearmaster and Hunter, but like it's in two different spots in the timeline at once, or maybe it's before. Sp it's not after Saint. No, no, no. It is before Hunter. But it's at like two different points on the timeline before Hunter. She suddenly cracks the egg in half. A forceful suction that begins to pull the machine and all of its floating lights into it. As they collect into a central point, it's as if all of their lights begin to combine to create an increasingly blinding glow. The suction only grows stronger, pulling the water, rocks, and surrounding metal into it. You and your partner are caught up in this and get assimilated as well. Open your eyes. In this white void, everything is combined. Your memories remain, but so too have you acquired the memories of your partner and family. Have you found your soulmate, or have you become your soulmate? It seems like one and the same. A perfect, undeniable, shared understanding of each other. A soul combined in unison. This was the state of being you were searching for. You are sure of it. Accept your fate. <laughs>